guys, welcome to Cloak Work Dandy Needles for the sixth episode of Undead Girl Murder Fast. I am so excited to be halfway through the season. Today's episode got me very, very hyped. I've got some good things to say about it. I also want to let you guys know I am recording my midway review tomorrow. I have officially sat down, finally crowned my top three OPs, EDs, and current standing of animes. I can't wait to bring that out for you guys, and that should be out on the channel tomorrow. Today's episode of Undead Girl. It solidified a choice I made, and I'm very happy I made that choice, and I cannot wait to show show you guys what I did so make sure you guys are subscribed if you do not want to miss out on that video that goes live tomorrow. Let's jump straight into it because this week's episode does a lot of really good things. When in England of course you have to have fish and chips however these don't look quite right. Points for trying usually you will get a giant piece of fish on top of your chips even the ones near me they do it. There's multiple pieces of something here I mean it could be chicken if you are in London or England make sure you guys are having fish and chips. Suguru initially opens the episode by running off some of the lines from presumably the pot thief the character given to us by Aya last week as a hint how to defeat Lupin a nice Rakugo style once again I have said that the vocal performance of this show is insane the guy playing Suguru delivering Rakugo and I know that Rakugo is very difficult I've watched a whole anime on how difficult it is to become go anywhere in Rakugo because you have to debut then you've got to be an opener then it takes you ages to actually promote yourself up to a proper headlining act my master has no tail. Go check that out if you have got an interest in Rakugo. It's actually a pretty decent anime. Last time as well when I saw Sherlock, I actually love the way that he's portrayed in this show. I love how sharp the silhouette looks. I love the OP where you've got London coming out the back of his head because that's actually really stylish and nice. So many plot twists this week. I hadn't even sat down properly. I was like just chilling, making some notes and then immediately we get the first plot twists. It was really weird when Sherlock said to Watson that I've already figured it out. Being really, really chill and nonchalant, which I thought was peculiar. I mean, Sherlock's personality is like that anyway. I wouldn't have put it past him. So obviously he got the acting down to the T. As soon as I saw Mycroft appear and him then look at Sherlock and go, wait, you're not Sherlock. My mind was like, what? Excuse me? What am I missing here? Mycroft is the brother of Sherlock. So very excited that he has made an appearance. Huge plot twist is just insane because it also shows you that Mycroft is no slouch when it comes to deduction. He is not going to be upstaged by his little brother at all. Immediately knowing that it's not his brother sat there in the chair. You get to see Arsene Lupin making his first skill debut. We can see what the guy's capable of. I am thoroughly impressed with him as a character already, even though we've only really seen him two episodes in. I'm impressed. I'm actually really excited to watch him and I really hope we get to see a little bit more of him. It did make me doubt whether it was the real Sherlock last week in the vault, but it would appear that it was actually the real Sherlock. And plus we do technically see him and Phantom in a really tiny room opposite the building. Two Sherlocks, that would be a complete headache having the two of them in the room and both be equally as annoying as each other because having Sherlock Holmes in real life as a person, he probably would be a person where he'd be fun to be around until a point. I think he would become a bit too much. Irritating. Watson is very special for putting up with Sherlock. I do think having two of them in the same room would just be like, oh my god, no, please. I do believe this is also part of the reason why Sherlock Holmes doesn't actually like having his face plastered all over the newspaper because of stuff like this. He just doesn't like people knowing what he looks like upper hand if people don't know what they're looking for because we do even see this episode Shizuka is sat right next door to Larson Lupin and she doesn't know what he looks like. That added bonus that you get if nobody actually knows what it is you look like. So it is indeed the week of mix-ups and I feel so bad for poor Aya. Nobody checked. Nobody figured out that she wasn't saying anything. Nobody also thought it was weird that she maybe weighed less or more than a bird. I think a head probably weighs more than a bird. I would presume birds are light because they are hollow technically. Their bones are hollow. He didn't realise that Aya had suddenly lost a lot of weight and the fact that she wasn't responding as well. No nobody noticed. <laughs> Lock picking moment with Arsene Lupin is amazing. I thought that was really swift and nice. He's showing off. He's there to brag. It's a very gutsy move that he's made to just show up in front of his opponents. Confidence is great, but it could be his undoing in the anime a bit later on. I do think it's a very impressive display of skills though. So hats off to him. I, I like it. I think that's part of the character. He's very suave. Sherlock says he is a gentleman. He has to naturally do this. This is part of the curse of being a gentleman. I do mention there is a ghost in Drury Lane that is actually correct. It's correct allegedly, depending on if you believe in ghosts or not, but that theatre is indeed reportedly haunted. There is quite a few places in London like that because of how old London is. It's just a place full of history. Shisuka ending up next door to Lupin and Phantom was just, whoa, this almost seems perfect, but she doesn't know and they don't know. So this again is just showing you that if you're 
face is plastered all over the newspaper. You couldn't have got away with this. If Aya had said beforehand, by the way, Arsene Lupin has blonde hair. This is what he looks like. He's going to be hanging out with a guy with a mask on. Shizuka wouldn't have probably sat there. She would have been like, oh my God, these are the guys we're looking for. We are told that Lupin has planted two seeds. I wonder what they were because I do feel like it might have led to the mishap or I think it was intentional at the end where we see Sherlock shooting the locks. I do wonder if the seeds he planted weren't physical but more a mental seed in his head. Sherlock doesn't really seem phased at this point. Mycroft is the one telling him to keep his guard up. That is just the perfect dynamic between the two because the older brother is supposed to be the more sterner. They're both quirky in their own ways but Sherlock is definitely the more of the gambler. He's more likely to take the risks if they're calculated enough. There is a nice name drop from Sherlock Holmes about Moriarty. Apparently happened eight years ago. So we know the guys have already gone toe-to-toe -to, -toe to each other. He then does mention that the Royce agents are very sus. I've already said that. I said last week that I just didn't trust them. There's a moment this week as well that makes me even more suspicious of them. The fact that they got out of there. They knew something. They knew something was about to happen. I do think the, the seeds planted was definitely the reason why Sherlock acts the way he does. And then we have the water coming in. So that explosion happens. He's obviously done that with the lock, thinking that somebody's going to come down lure you into acting in a certain way that's going to actually screw everybody over. Aya does indeed have the worst night and I feel really bad for her because she does definitely need somebody holding her. So she hasn't got powers where she can levitate or anything. She hasn't got the ability to just float around. We do get a glimpse of those immortal powers as she is run over, which made me feel even worse for poor Aya. Who let the prisoners out? Why are the twins now out and about? I want to believe that they might be partnered with Moriarty. I don't know, I've just got a hunch that this is actually an important fact, so I've written it down and that's why I'm mentioning it right now. Aya telling Suguru who's going to get punished for his actions. I guess that's Shizuka's role. She's just going to be there beating him up repeatedly because Aya can't exactly do anything. But I do also really like the cautious glance, the lace sliding over Aya as she conceals her face when she sees Lupin because she has a immediate connection that this indeed must be us and Lupin, which I think is really, really cool because I love the fact that she asks them their names and they're like, oh no, it's not important. It's like, okay, no, no, it, it is. It's important. We know that. The little fight between Suguru and us and Lupin, I I actually loved this fight. This fight was just great. It was, again, more hand-to-hand -hand combat, but we had the marble effect going on, which I think is really nice. And now I know I was pumping this anime up for using it's just hand-to-hand -hand combat and not having quirks or anything. Yeah, here is Arsene Lupin using the quirky effect of the marbles. It's still really cool and it still feels really grounded. It doesn't feel like they're moving in a way that they wouldn't be moving. It feels really controlled. I love the fact that he's able to dupe him and then he has three in his hand and there's another two in his hand. I thought the effects were cool. I thought the banter was cool i believe all the moving was cool the animation is really nice suguru ends up actually failing i don't know if i think it might have been done on purpose because obviously i has given him the hint the pot thief again don't know about this story i didn't really want to go and look up in case it gave me any hints or spoilers nobody in the comments said anything nobody is probably familiar with the story of the pot thief from what i could see from the facial expression he did which looked very goofy and i think i know the exact character from the artwork i haven't seen anything but I do recognise that character. It makes me wonder if he's playing the fool. He goaded him into fighting by saying, hey, I'm very strong, which he knew he was going to get reaction from. I don't know if I'm onto something or if I'm half grasping at straws here, but it feels like maybe something important happened during the fight, but I can't see how. He's an interesting character. I am actually really growing on Arsene Lupin. I think he's a great character and he's very interesting to watch. I keep forgetting that Moriarty is going to be part of this somehow. Wondering if the Royce guys are all part of Moriarty. They're going to try and corner Lupin and get the gem for themselves. Sherlock seems to think that he's going to get the gem from them afterwards. Infers that Sherlock's going to lose and they're going to get the gem anyway. More names are added to the lineup. I wasn't keen on the amount of people getting involved. There are now 111 people on the grounds. The numbers are just increasing, which makes it very hard to keep track of everybody. We have been told that somebody has stolen a guard's uniform. There's now been an explosion. I would bet the guard's uniform is probably going to be Arsene Lupin. There's two teams trying to get that diamond. I don't think they're aware of each other, however, because I don't think Lupin would work with somebody like Moriarty because he's a gentleman thief. That's not his style. This is definitely going to be the worst hair award for me. It bugged me last week. It's bugging me again. I don't like this hair. And I'm also sus of you two. I think you two are up to something. They also came up with the whole Willis protecting Master Fog's assets. I've got a bit of a suspicion on Fog. I know he checked the diamond before they arrived, but how do we know Master Fog isn't a fake? Nobody's actually kept an eye on a guy. 
Royce getting out of there, escaping their fate of being stuck in the vault. I don't know, there's a lot of sus moments now starting to get to me. Now, the music picking up as the game starts to get underway is great. The violins are playing some very short notes. I think it's staccato. I really like it. It starts to really hype it up. It starts to get faster and faster. We've got six people in the basement who are now, sadly, down to the big brain act initially of Sherlock, now stuck with water pouring in. The pop thief is once again mentioned from the rooftop. So we've now got Holmes shooting the locks as he promised because he said that my gun will be empty by 11 o'clock. He was then going to be borrowing the rounds from Watson so he knew this was going to happen which means he's fought ahead it's one of the seeds that Lupin planted because goaded him by giving him a time right he told him exactly what time it would be happening Sherlock got in he saw the clock hit 11 he panicked shot the locks they were told that somebody snuck in so he thought somebody was going to come in through the front door he then seals it shut and that's exactly playing into Lupin's hand because Lupin presumed he was going to do that. So he blew up the top and he's now flooding the basement, which I presume is all part of the act. Now, the build-up is really, really hype. Team Cage is still on the roof. I don't know why they're on the roof and whether there's something up their sleeve, if they know something that nobody else does, because it does seem like they're very out of the way of all the action twist at the end at the moment really just messing with me because it seems like right now Lupin has the upper hand because right now Sherlock and team are probably going to drown if they can't get them out because that locksmith is going to take till the morning as they said we can't get out till the morning they're going to have to call a locksmith to get us out they can't go out the front door because you've busted those locks and it's filling up and we know that only a small child can get out the roof and there's obviously a lot of water now pouring in it would seem that Sherlock's done a bad thing by playing into the hands of being goaded something's gonna have to give on this case because Lupin would also need to get in if he isn't in already and I still think he could be in there and I think Fogg is a fake or Moriarty could be in there because we know that Moriarty's working with an illusionist maybe Fogg is above he's the one causing the explosions and the water going in and he's probably just gonna wait till the diamond comes out somehow that bit that bit I haven't figured out unless he's gonna sneak in when they're dead in the morning I don't know that that makes sense and then maybe Moriarty's illusionist the guy with the funky sideburns I thought those sideburns were awesome he could be Fogg right now he's also an illusionist so maybe he can get out there that's my thought on the episode. I thought it was fantastic. Lupin currently has the upper hand for now, but I don't think it's going to remain that way. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. What did you think of the episode? I am really hyped by this show. I do think this show is doing a great job of staying afloat. The score is 7.8. That made me really happy. I went there yesterday because I was making my lineup for the midways. I saw the score had increased and it really made me happy because I would consider 7.8 a very good score. Something about the way they've handled this is just perfect. They've nailed it and you've really got me hooked. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow for my midway review. It's also fun just to see how my thoughts have changed to the end of season. I'm going to give you no hints apart from the fact you know Undead Girl's on there somewhere. Thank you guys so much. Look after yourselves. Bye bye. <laughs>